Hey everybody, good to see you back once again for another episode of Watch X231 Just Torment Squatch to No End. We've got some progress that's been made since the last time we spoke. Got the top cover cleaned up, both sides. We're going to do a glip tall finish in there. Also got uh, the gate, the actuator cleaned up, and our vent tube. We have a pretty decent prairie gold sample still intact in there. And we had a lot of good guesses under the last um, episode as to what this boss and drilling may have been for that is under that welch plug. And a lot of guesses said possibly a fluid dipstick. And that was something that had crossed my mind at first too, but then I quickly discounted. But um, we have level plugs on the side for the TA compartment right there and for the transmission slash rear end level right there. So. A, a dipstick would not have been needed. B, when we sight straight down from where that plug is, it puts us right in line with the sliding fourth gear. So a dipstick would not have had enough uh, reach to get down to the fluid level regardless if that had been for that. My personal guess is, well, it ties back to the fact that we know we had several different AmpliTorque setups going on throughout the evolution of this tractor. And being that it is so close next to this reverse shift rail, it would not have been much work to put an extra dog or an extra tang, kind of like these remote ones up here, on the side of that rail. And you could have had this is all speculation, but some sort of a um, vertical lever with a linkage where it could have been an interlock that would have either engaged something in reverse or disengaged or prevented something from being engaged when the tractor was in reverse. And I say that because the archive photo here shows what the first iteration of the torque amplifier linkage looked like. And it's hard to see it's not easy to pick out the detail, but we have some pivots going on right here and some rods and some other stuff that goes back underneath the dash. And that is this boss right here that was also capped over with a Welch plug. And we know from prior episodes, that was for an early vertical style engagement yoke for the over center clutch on the front of the torque amplifier before they went and drilled and then welded in the bungs for that um, horizontal more like the production version of the uh, clutch engagement for that AmpliTorque. So could have been an interlock that would have ran down the side, intersected with that. Uh, it's all just speculation at this point, but this is part of the fun of prototype tractors. So with that out of the way, we are going to start fabrication on the new shifter plunger and fork. So that's 5 8 shaft, we can use the same drill rod as we did for the transmission rails. We have to be seven and one quarter inches long overall. Here we've got our mark on the piece of rod. Let's start by cutting it to length. giving it a generous taper for welding. And it looks like we're good up to this point. So now we need to replicate the fork. That is just quarter inch thick by three quarter inch wide um, steel strap that has been bent around to have a 5 8 gap in the middle. So we've got some one quarter by three quarter right here. Let's form that next.
All right, I left the fork piece just a little bit long. That's the type of piece I like to give myself just a little bit extra to work with, just in case. Otherwise, everything's looking pretty good. All right, we're welded, and I threw this back in the lathe real quick just to dress the bottom eighth of an inch of my weld bead up a little bit because comparing this to the original, you can see the witness mark indicates that this retracted all the way into the housing right up until it was at that weld. So I just um, evened this one out to match so we won't be inhibited there. The next problem now, I'm fighting another set of misaligned bores. This cover is just like the transmission case was for that 2-3 shift rail. We start in just fine, but I've already modified it a little bit. We started getting tight as soon as we got into this, uh, this back opening. And then I've just about got it fitted so that it will go as far in as it needs to, but we're still, we're still tight once we get just about all the way in. And I'm starting to think they may have bent these shafts to suit misaligned bores intentionally. Seen here's theory, I showed this to him, and he said he wouldn't doubt it. There we go, we got it loose. If the prototype guys didn't get the hand-me-down um, worn out loose equipment from the assembly line, and that was good enough for them because they were gonna be doing a lot of hand fitting of things anyhow. So, all right, since I just uh, bound that in, you can see kind of that dark line just off the end of my finger right there just on that transition, because I've been beveling and just kind of taking the end of the shaft down, trying to hand fit it. We're still a little bit tight right there, so tedious work when nothing lines up. Oh. Okay, I've got it that little bit of filing and sanding you just watched. There was about 55 more minutes of that I didn't bother to record, but through trial and error, we're a good fit now. So I basically did what the prototype shop did, all right? We could have modified the cover to fit the rod. I just modified the rod to fit the cover. Seems to be standard theme with this tractor. So next we finish off the fork end. All right, we've got this end done. So final order of business is to cross drill this new plunger rod in accordance to, um, you know, position of actuator on old plunger rods. So that's easy enough to figure out. I'm just gonna mock the actuator up to the old one. All right, and we can take a measurement, say, from the back end of the actuator to the back end of the rod, two and one eighth inches, easy enough. We can now use the actuator as a drill guide. I will clamp this beneath the chuck of the drill press and we'll center up our cross drilled holes with the bit and then just place the new rod in it accordingly, drill our hole. But this is also one of the things that nightmares are made of because when we check alignment, 
you can see how the actuator is square with the shaft but the fork is not square with the actuator. It actually cants down at angles in relation to it a little bit. So the question now becomes, do I replicate this alignment perfectly just as it is, or do I square everything up? Unfortunately, when you're working on a tractor like this, you won't know what the correct answer is until you get everything put together. Okay, let's check our alignment. Good. Good pass through. So here it is. That was the final step. This thing looks kind of neat. Just not in the gate. You can just vision that thing tilting side to side, grabbing gears. Yeah. Excellent fit in the actuator too. So actually pretty happy with how that turned out. The center hole drilling is a lot cleaner in the new one. So once again, out with the old and in with the new. So next we start on the shifter handle itself. So we've got this piece of 5 8 just regular round stock. It doesn't know it yet, but it's about to be a shifter. And first thing I'm going to do, let's see. Oh yeah, knob doesn't come off too bad actually. I think this is just a solid Bakelite knob. I don't even think there's a metal insert in it. Yeah, yep, no metal in there. Most of those threads are gone too. We need to replicate this taper on the end, and then it looks like a 3 8 fine thread. So let's get busy. Okay, that's the way I like to do it with a round shaft. Get the threads 90% of the way there with the lathe and then just finish them off with the die. That means everything's going to be nice and true as it goes down. That gave us the room. So old South Bend lathe for the win. And I didn't record much of that at all out there because that's the unheated part of the shop. And this time of year, it's downright uncomfortable. But I do use that South Bend from time to time for tapers and threads, things of that nature. So we have a very good match to the original up at the top. But that is as far as we can go on this until we can determine if this bend is at the proper angle, if this handle is the proper length. And to do that, we are going to need to do some research. To do that research, I'm going to need a few props to help me out. So that means we need to go out in the cold, find a few more X231 pieces. How to make a walk to the shed take twice as long.
Howdy H, been a while. So we've got X231 front pedestal. This hub spins, that one doesn't, probably the reason why we found it with one wheel. Oh, seat base bracket, great big torch hole in it because why not, it's X231, everything else has torch holes as well. This is what I need though. Yeah. All right. What else we got? Yeah. Gonna need this. Yeah, I'm going to grab this too. As long as I'm here. Okay, everybody, we're going to need to let these pieces climatize a little bit. They're still pretty cold, actually a little bit difficult to handle. So we've got enough time left today to give that transmission top cover the old Gliptol treatment. So what I've done is uh, left that um, door open to the outer part right there. That usually keeps the furnace running pretty steady. And we get some nice circulation right in and out of here so paint fumes aren't a problem. And... Um, if you all ever buy any of this stuff, one quart will go a long ways. Back when I first started on the major castings for X231, I bought two quarts of this hoping to get through both of those castings. Well, I still haven't opened the second one, so we did everything on the whole back end and midsection of X231. Um, I'm doing the inside of the cover now. I did a bunch of stuff on the Super M, the whole inside of the bell housing for that, and a couple seal retainers, and I've still got probably a third of this first can left so this stuff really stretches out a long ways I also decided this was as good of a time as any to do this because now that I've got that plunger rod made I'm confident I'm not going to have to do any more work on the inside of the cover here so it's not going to be in my way having a fresh coating on there plus it is not going to interfere at all with the um, torch hole repair that I have planned for that um, shifter box on the front of this casting so might as well get a good coating on as long as I've got a little bit of time and we can get that to uh, start setting up so that work can continue. There, that looks good. Well, everyone, I'm going to call it an episode. I didn't get as far today as I had hoped, but I'm also at a really good point to break away. By tomorrow morning, this will all be dry. I can rest easy tonight knowing I've got the majority of the fabrication done for the top cover mechanism. Just minutes ago, the new knob showed up for the new shifter that we've got a good start on. And by tomorrow, our props will be warm enough to touch. So, exciting times. I'm going to hit the ground running tomorrow morning and see if I can get the rest of that shifter fabrication completed. And if I'm lucky, we'll actually get far enough to begin the torch hole repair on each side of that transmission top cover. So, I hope to see you all back for that. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Let's hit it hard again tomorrow.